From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning again, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Pastor Alan Bagg. This week we're having a look at understanding the Lord's tithe. Now, this subject is such... <laughs> the enemy has been able to create such controversy around this subject that really, as far as I'm concerned, when you know the truth of it, you realize the controversy is for one reason and one reason only. Jesus said it in Mark chapter 4, the thief comes to steal. He comes to steal the word out of your life. He tries to do it by taking the word of God out. And Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Of course the devil wants to try and stop what God's doing in your life. And that's why he's created controversy around this area. This is where we get the most of our queries around is whether we should be tithing and where do I tithe and how do I tithe. Well, let's have a look at it. Yeah, we've been studying it from Malachi chapter 3. I don't want to go into the whole reading of it again. We've already discussed it on Tuesday and Wednesday. I really want to encourage you, make sure you get a hold of the tapes and the CDs from that those weeks, uh, those days, so that you can catch up with what we're doing here. But let's have a look at verse 10. God says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Now, when it comes to the tithe, we understand that uh, God has already established the tithe, this whole thing with its Old Testament and New Testament. We understand that the tithe, the concept of what belongs to God was established in the Garden of Eden. When Adam was in the garden, God said, you can eat of everything freely. Eat as much as you want of everything. It's yours. But the tree is mine. Don't touch that tree. And they said, don't eat of the tree. He said, you could touch it. You've got to tend the thing. Eve said, don't touch it, which was a misquote from God, mis misquote of God. God said, don't eat that tree. That is holy. It's sanctified. And then you can see down through the ages in Abraham, in Genesis chapter 14 through verse 18 through 20, where he tithes to Melchizedek, principle put in place long before the law ever established it. And then Jacob in Genesis chapter 28, verse 20 to 22, obviously he learned from his father Isaac, who learned from his father Abraham. He said, if you look after me, God, and you bless me, man, I will surely give a 10% of everything that I get back to you. So we see this as a principle all the way through the Old Testament. Of course it was brought in to the law just the same way as thou shalt not kill was written into the law. Uh, at, when, when Cain killed Abel he violated a principle of the kingdom of God and as a result uh, suffered the consequences of it. Uh, no one was ever allowed to kill and so but it was legislated under the law. Thou shalt not kill. Of course when Jesus came he said I didn't come to do away with the law, I came to fulfill it. So there's a higher law in the kingdom of God, in fact, where, for example, the law of Moses says that you may not commit adultery. Jesus says you're not even allowed to look at somebody with lust in your heart. That's just as good as committing adultery. So there's a higher standard fulfilled through Jesus. He didn't do away, didn't wash away the law. The legislation that Moses wrote down was simply recording principles that already existed. And then in the New Testament, you can go read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 4 to 11. And you've seen verse 17. It talks about, Ab about Jesus being a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, Melchizedek is the high priest that Abraham tithed to. And he spoke about those that tithe through the Levitical priesthood under the law. He says that's the case. But even there, by doing that, they were still tithing to the high priest because Levi was in the loins of Abraham. And so Abraham received the tithe. He, he gave the tithe. Melchizedek received it. And then the writer of Hebrews says there, 
Now today our high priest, he receives the tithes from us. So he lives forever and always will receive tithe. Now that's just the basis of the word, but why is it such an issue? And I believe it's because one area has been missing that some, most people aren't even aware of. When God said yet yeah, in verse 10 that I will open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing, there will not be room enough to receive it. A lot of people misunderstood that I was one of them. They thought if you bring the tithe in, then God will give you so much stuff. You know, He'll give you so much money you won't be able to receive it all. It's just going to flow, overflow your your bank account and everything. No, he's not talking about stuff yet. He's talking about a blessing. And it's that blessing that we need to identify. Now, yesterday we started looking at it. Come back with me to Genesis chapter 12. And we saw in Genesis 1 that God blessed Adam and said, Be fruitful and multiply. So we understand that the blessing is a releasing of God's word into someone's life that enables them to prosper, enables them to multiply and increase. That's what happened to Adam. Then yeah, in chapter 12, the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land that I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. So he says, I will bless you. Now remember that we said the blessing is the spoken word, is releasing the power to prosper to multiply and increase but doing that God says I will also then make you a great nation and make your name great you shall be a blessing I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you it's an amazing thing if you want to be blessed find out find someone who's already blessed he says I will bless those who bless you you find a man of God who's prospering and increasing and you become a part of that and you bless them and you speak into their life and say, I'm encouraging you to keep increasing. And you start to sow into that. What happens is God says, I will bless those who bless you. So when you bless someone who's blessed, you get blessed by God as well. And he says, and in you all families in the earth will be blessed. Now, Abraham started living this way. Now, I want you to see, come with me to chapter 24. Obviously, at this point, he's called Abram, and eventually his name is changed to Abraham. That's not our study today. His name is changed to Abraham, verse 34. This is Moses' servant. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. Not Moses' servant, Abraham's servant. He said, I am Abraham's servant, verse 35. Now listen to what he says here. The Lord has blessed my master greatly and, he has become great and he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female servants and camels and donkeys. Now get a hold of that. The servant understands that the blessing is not the stuff. God has blessed my, my master Abraham and as a result of that, he's given him all the silver and gold, and he's become very great. So you can see the goods is not the blessing. The blessing is the empowerment to prosper and to increase. Now let's keep reading here. Let's have a look at Genesis chapter 26. And I want you to see that this is exactly what happens in Isaac's life. Verse 1, there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, in Gerar. Now, when we talk about a famine, you must understand that that famine is a result of a drought. Because there's a drought, there's no water. Because there's no water, there's no crops to grow. And because there's no crops, there's no food. You could call this a recession. There's a recession in the land. And I remember one day when uh, South Africa was experiencing a recession, I went over to visit somebody in the United States and they said to me, uh, we hear there's a recession in South Africa. So I said, yeah, that's what they tell me. And they said, so how is it affecting you? I said to them, I've chosen not to participate. Praise God. That's what happened here. Listen, Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar, and the Lord appeared to him and said, do not go down to Egypt. Don't, you don't have to worry. He says, live in the land which I tell you. 
In other words, you don't have to go running. Now, remember, Egypt's the top of the world. So often when people get into trouble, they head out and they want to just get into, you know, down to the world system. I need to go and have someone help me solve this problem. And God says in verse 3, Dwell in the land and I will be with you and bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Now remember, we've identified the blessing as the empowerment to prosper. So God says, I will be with you and I will empower you to prosper. For to you and your descendants I give these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Now what was the oath? I will bless you and I'll make you great and I'll bless those who bless you and you will be a blessing. Amen. So he says, listen, I'm going to watch over that and make sure it happens. In verse 4, and I will make your descendants, your seed multiplies the stars of the heaven and I will give to your descendants all these lands and in all your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because, why? Now he has a key. Abraham obeyed my voice and he kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. Uh, and, and my laws. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar. So he stayed there. And notice God says, I blessed Abraham because he obeyed. There's a key there. Obedience activates the blessing. You get a hold of that? Remember Deuteronomy 28? If you hearken to the voice of God and obey and hearken to do all that He commands you, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Now the blessing, what is it? Verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land. Which land? This land that God told him to stay in. That has a famine. I mean, no one else will dare sow seed in that land. I mean, who puts good seed into dead soil? No one unless you've been commanded by God. So he's sowing the seed. Because you see, listen, let me rephrase that slightly. Otherwise, there'll be a misunderstanding here. When I say dead soil, that's in the natural. Everybody else knows there's no land, there's no rain, there's no nutrition in the soil. That's why the crops aren't growing. But when God said, sow in that land, it became living soil. Why? Because God spoke. That's the blessing. So He's empowered that land to produce. So Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, now listen, and the Lord blessed him. Oh, hallelujah. Now notice, the hundredfold was not the blessing. He sowed his seed. The seed is designed to produce a hundredfold. And he received the hundredfold. And because of his obedience, the Lord now blessed him. And what does that mean? He is now empowered to prosper. Let's see if that's so. Verse 13, the man began to prosper and he continued prospering until he was very prosperous. Now get a hold of that. Notice the very prosperous doesn't just manifest. He began prospering. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Why? That blessing was at work in his life. The prosperity itself wasn't the blessing. God blessed him first. Then he began prospering. So the blessing was producing the prosperity. You get a hold of that. So the blessing is the power, the power and the force that produces the prosperity. And verse 13, he prospered till he became very prosperous. Verse 14, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Now, you need to get a hold of this, that the blessing is not the stuff. This is so critical. It's a key to understanding this. The blessing was released by God when He said to him, Sow that seed. And Isaac obeyed. And the result of obeying, he began prospering. That blessing started to produce in his life. And then you see he had all these possessions and great flocks and herds. And then in fact, verse 16, Abimelech said to Isaac, Go away from us, for you are mightier than we. Wow, this one man was greater than this whole nation. So, yeah, we see the blessing produces the goods. The goods are not the blessing. Now, come with me to also to Leviticus chapter 25. I just want to reinforce this through 
the mouth of two or three scriptures. The Bible says, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a truth be established. So let's do that. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 21. God says, Then I will command my blessing on you in the sixth year, and the blessing will bring forth produce enough for three years. Did you see that? God says, I command my blessing. Now, when God commands, how does He do it? He speaks a word. So when God speaks a word, He says, I bless you, then you are empowered to prosper. And that blessing will bring forth produce. So the blessing produces the goods. And let's show you one more scripture here. Proverbs chapter 10. That this really clears it all up. And this, this is where you see the truth starting to manifest now and be revealed to us. Look at Proverbs chapter 10 verse 21. The lips of the righteous feed many. You see that? It's not food and money and that, that doesn't. Now of course that's the tangible that feeds but it begins with the lips. So you start declaring and you start speaking and that starts to produce the actual things. And verse 21, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Now that would, that would explain a lot of people don't understand the blessing of the tithe and that's what we're clearing up now. Verse 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Now get a hold of that. The blessing makes rich. So the rich is not the blessing. The blessing makes one rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. You see, there is a way to get rich in the world. But it costs a lot. There's, people have suffered and struggled. They've lost families in trying to get rich. They've lost uh, so much. They've got ulcers, got into drugs and alcohol, just simply in a pursuit to try to get rich. So far, some people even committed suicide because they've been trying to get rich. Tremendous sorrow. But when God's blessing empowers you, and you become rich through the power of God, there's no sorrow involved, because you're not trying to undercut people, you're not pursuing things, you're pursuing God. Now there's the key. Matthew 6, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things, what things? The stuff will be added to you. So many people are running after the stuff and that the stuff just keeps running, outrunning them. It, it just outruns and beats them and <laughs> smashes them over the head and they struggle and suffer because of it. But when you make the kingdom of God your priority, being one with God, walking in obedience with God, obeying His word, the blessing empowers you. It just begins to increase in your life. And the Bible says the result of that blessing is it makes one rich. That word make, if, if I had to make somebody do something, that means I'm forcing them to do it. The blessing literally, if you're walking in the fullness of the blessing, you can't outrun God's provision. <laughs> it's just the result of it. The blessing enforces prosperity. It enforces God's blessing. It's just, you know, someone once said to me, you know, Pastor Allen, for a preacher, you, you know, you, you got quite, a, you, you're quite wealthy in that. And I thought, you know, that statement is a very sad one because we understand that God is the one that provides and supplies. But let's just say for a moment that was the case. Let's say I had too many things and, and, I, and I gave it all away. Now, I'm, I give generously. I, I live by God's principle. We as a ministry sow generously into many people's lives. I personally sow into individuals. And, and that's, what, that's the way I live. Jesus is more blessed to give than to receive. But let's say I decide, okay, and let's say I've got to be poor in order to be a good Christian. That means I've got to give all my things away, everything. So I give everything away. we got a real problem because Luke 6.38 says, Give and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men will put it back into your bosom. And I thought, you know, well, if somebody has a problem now, let's say that happens. What's going to happen then? No, uh, we, we know that God's blessing when you walk in it, it makes you rich. But you see, it's not making you rich for you to be rich. It's not so that I got lots of things. I mean, I can only sleep in one bed at a night. I can only drive one car at a time. No, the rich, the abundance is there so I can be a blessing in someone else's life. Praise God when someone gives me a car because then that releases me 
to be able to give a car, my car, into someone else's life. And I've given many cars away. Janine and I have given multiple cars away. So it's no wonder that we've been blessed with a car. The blessing empowered us and someone put a car in our lives. And so that empowerment, the blessing, everything we put our hand to prospers. Everything we put our hand to increases. You get involved in business this way, I'm telling you, you see your blessing. You activate the blessing in your life. Your business will prosper. It'll multiply. It'll increase. It'll continue to grow. And he adds no sorrow with it. Have a look at chapter 8, verse 21 here. If we say, uh, just before we go there, I want to show you something else here. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Keep your mark here because we're coming right back. Deuteronomy verse 18 of chapter 8. Listen to this. Remember I said the blessing empowers you to, to be prosperous. It makes one wealthy. Have a look here at verse 18. You shall remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant. Notice, He doesn't, doesn't say He'll give you wealth. He gives you power to get wealth. Why? That He can establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers. That's Abraham. So yeah, we see once again, the wealth is not the power. The power to get wealth. God never said, I'm going to give you wealth. He said, I'll give you power to get wealth. Now that power we've just discovered is this blessing. So how do I activate this? Well, first of all, due to, uh, Proverbs chapter 8, you look at, have, have a look at verse 21. This is wisdom. Look at verse 1. It says, does not wisdom cry out? Now this is wisdom speaking. Verse 21, wisdom says, I cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may inherit their treasuries. Now, there you can see wisdom, when you understand God's ways, you inherit wealth. You have the power to get wealth. So how do you activate it? Back to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, and says the Lord of hosts. If I'll not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing, there's not room enough to contain it. See, when you bring the tithe in, you've obeyed God's instruction. And when you do that, it releases the blessing. And now you're empowered to prosper. So how do I tithe? Where do I tithe? And how does it work? That we're going to cover tomorrow. Until then, I want you to watch this. And I'll see you right after. Alan Back Ministries is coming to your area. If you're in the Vintage area in Namibia next week, Dr. Aaron will be ministering at Greater Love Ministries Conference, the ministry of Apostle Haruna and Kiki Goro. If you would like to attend this event and sit under the ministry of Dr. Allen, contact us for any information regarding this engagement. Tithing, one of the most contested and spoken about laws in the Word of God. Most often, our finances seem to be the first and one of the greatest areas Satan keeps attacking in our lives. In this series, you'll discover what the tithe is, what happens when you tithe, as well as how the blessing is connected to the tithe. In this series, Pastor Alan Bagg studies out the blessing of the tithe, bringing new revelation as well as practical steps you need to take to build your faith as well as increase your ability as a steward of God. To order this powerful two-part series, call 0800 Wisdom or write to us here at Allen Bag Ministries. So get yours today. Now that blessing begins with you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now friend, if you're watching this program and you've not yet made Jesus Lord of your life, I want to invite you to do it today. Uh, you may have happened to come across this program for your first time or maybe you've watched it for some time now. But you've never said with your mouth, Jesus is my Lord. You know, the Bible says if you believe in your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you'll be saved. So why don't you pray this prayer right now with me? There, where you're sitting, watching this program, say this out loud. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying for me. I believe with all my heart you raised from the dead. You're alive forevermore. And I invite you into my heart. I call you Lord. And I know as I do this, 
I am born again a child of God. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Praise God, my friend, you are born again. I have a gift for you. I want to send you this tape or a CD if you prefer. Just tell us what your preference is. Uh, it's a little study program as well as your decision. Those are my free gift to you. I'd like to sow that into your life. I'll pay the postage as well. Please just call me on that phone number or write to me at that address. As soon as we have your details, we'll send that off to you. Well, tomorrow we're going to conclude this subject. It is powerful. It is life-changing. And I trust you're already experiencing the change as a result of it. I look forward to being with you there once again. This is Pastor Alan Bagg reminding you, Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses 